right? They say. Hey everyone, welcome back to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Before we start, you already know we gotta give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Royalty Honey. Keep it hard, guys. And if you don't wanna be in my show and you wanna stay home, make sure you hire attorney Rosenberg. On today's episode, we have Big Hutch. <laughs> welcome to Indicted TV, Hutch. Thanks for having me. Of course. You know, I think, you know, it's not even I think. It's an honor having you. Well, I, it's you know? my pleasure being here. So, <laughs> you know. So tell, I haven't seen you in a minute, and it's great to see you. You know, you, it's, you know? Been a, it's been I a long been minute. minute. I didn't even have the baby yet. And the baby's I five. No, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and the baby's wow. five. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, when, uh, when B passed, mm -hmm. I was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I was pregnant. I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even... Wow, that long ago. That long. Ooh, we. Yeah. Well, hey, good to see you. I know, likewise. <laughs> so let's get into it. So tell okay. us, tell Indicted, um, if they don't know, where, you know, tell us where you're from, where you grew up. Okay. How was the inside of your house growing up, brothers, <laughs> mom, dad, things like that? Well, uh, I grew up in, well, I'm originally from Dallas. Okay. Um, I, when I moved to California, I moved um, to South Central. Okay. Um, we end up, when I was probably about 11, we moved to Pomona. Okay. Um, Around what years? Just so I could get a visual, you know, everybody could get a visual of the time, you know what I'm saying? 70s. This okay. is the 70s, 70s, early 80s. Yes. Um, so you know I was in Southern California, <laughs> 70s and early 80s. You know, it's a fun time. I um, wasn't born yet, you know? Well, I'm just saying, you can, you, you got family like that. Yes. So. Yeah, but um, in, the, in the 70s, um, I would say in LA, you know, it was cool. But when I got to Pomona, Pomona was like a working. T town, you know, um, Ontario Airport hadn't really been developed. It was like a small little thing. Um, nothing really was out here in this area like Pomona and all of that. But, you know, the cool thing I got to experience growing up was I kind of got the out of city feel, but inner city feel at the same time. OK, so it's, it's very hip town, but it was a working town in the 80s when I was a teenager. That's when like gang banging and the crack era could hit hard. Yeah. So it hit everywhere hard. Yeah. You know. So I I grew up in a house with my father was a musician. Um I, I didn't really know my biological mother, but my my stepmom or when I step my my foster mom, which she adopted me when I was really little, was my father's best friend. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah. So my mama Candy, she's the, the lady that's in our video Black Superman. Um but yeah, I was raised by him and her. Um, pretty pretty humble life. My dad was a songwriter uh, and oh. a composer and a producer for Motown. Nice. Um, yeah, and you know, so I grew up in that kind of di that kind of family as a kid. Music around me all the time. You know, um, pretty subtle. I mean, no nothing crazy. But my dad was, I won't say my dad was a tyrant, but I'll say my dad was really he was kind of six o'clock straight up and down. Like there ain't no gray area you know the biggest thing i could say my dad with my dad which was so powerful to me he had one arm lost his arm when he was 11 years oh, old wow but he raised kids and yeah he was the most powerful man i ever met in my life yes um that's why i get all of my chops from basically so but he was really hard nose what was right was right what was wrong was wrong and that's you it. know when i started cutting up and being in the streets when i was 11 in 11th and 12th grade I had to leave the house. Oh. You know, he was a guy like that. So that's like, the age you started to get into trouble. Absolutely. Around yeah. like 16, 17. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I start running with cats, running with cats in the streets, selling drugs, all of that shit. Okay. You know what I mean? And it's for me, like I grew up in a humble household, but for me, it was being rebellious. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just me being, me acting out yeah. as a young kid. And, and you, what, did, what's, what high school did you Pomona, go to? I went to Pomona High. Okay. You know, I played. I played sports there. I was in the music, in the music. Every band you can name. Oh, I was cool. in. I was in orchestra, core marching band, jazz ensemble. Anything has something to do. And I played football. So you so, had good grades. Decent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, was, I had decent grades. So you, yeah. I graduated and all that. Oh, I didn't, okay. I didn't go to. I went to night school. I never went to continuation school, but I had because I used to fight a lot. Uh -huh. I almost, that, that was my own. That was my biggest problem. My grades never were a problem. But my, I had a bad, I had anger issues when I was hella young, like really, really bad. I fought a lot, 
You know what I mean? Like, or I act out a lot. Okay. So you just didn't like nobody saying anything to you. I was always a short guy, a darker guy, to you know what I mean. Like, like we ain't dark, huh? <laughs> but I'm just saying, I always was a shorter yeah. guy, a darker guy. Oh, okay, that, you're saying that about you. Okay, yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I always was a shorter guy, a darker guy. So I, I always was. Yeah, like, had to prove myself. For sure. For sure. I had a little man complex. Oh you know? no. <laughs> hey, Napoleon but I, complex. Yeah, but now you can admit it, huh? Complex. <laughs> <laughs> Women like it, so hey, whatever like works. It. I ain't never had no <laughs> complaints, but, but yeah, so that was my transition into you know that life. Okay. You know. You know. So um, so you never went to juvenile hall? Or no, 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 no. Like no. Oh, okay. Fortunately, it was great. Yeah, okay, good, that. good, yeah. good. Yeah. So tell me, what what was like the first time you ever got arrested, and what did you get arrested for? Like I for was young. I mean, I, it was young. It was regular, like, um, um, it's hardly kind of like you know. Um, the first time well, let's of just say some this. real the first time you went to the LA County Jail oh wow that is, I can't remember that but I can tell you the first time I really got into it okay, we threw me. a house party Okay, right? we threw this house party and um, Pomona Police came and well, I guess we got into it with some people at, at, at the party over some shit right um, so the police is trying to um, defuse everything and we tell them to leave we got the shit we got the shit all of a sudden they trying to rush my mom's house my brother jumping in, in between them I'm jumping in, in between them next thing we know we scuffling Pomona police oh wow now I'm getting tased now they arresting me now you know yes all that shit yeah and that's the first time I had real serious altercations when I was selling drugs I really didn't never have it because we kind of kept it low key OG a lot, you know, in that era. This was like, I only never had, I only had one altercation where I went to jail with the Pomona police was that one. Okay. And I beat that case because they were wrong because uh, one of my friends, one of my child, my, my classmate's mother was there and she was going to go witness and she was illegal. Like she was in legal. She was like, I witnessed it and I'm a, go. so they had to back up mm -hmm. off of it. Yeah. Well, good. And I was a younger daughter at the time. I think I was like 22 when that okay. happened. Okay. So yeah, I went to the county. The county was oh man, back then the county well, was terrible. Well, tell us about that. We want to know. Back then the county. And those know, years. I mean, you know, it, it was super, super like um, how can I say it? It was vigilante world. I would say like back then. I mean, I don't know what it is now. I haven't been in years. But Thank God. But. <laughs> <laughs> But back then is when you go in there and they don't give a fuck about you. They put you anywhere. They, they, the sheriffs f you. I don't know if they still do that shit, but I, that's I'm how sure it's kind of a little us. bit. It's probably a little but bit yeah, more. Yeah. I don't know if they got it more lined up right. But um, later on when I was, um, when I had went back a few times. Because you guys heard that, right? He said a few times. Yeah, when I went back a few times. <laughs> It was like what I what I experienced in there with the sheriffs was we the motherfuckers and you motherfuckers ain't shit. I experienced it, you know. And then the conditions in there. I remember one time I went to the county where they had us all in the chapel. We didn't get a bed. Oh wow! They had us sleeping on the on the pew. And yeah. But yeah. no. But you guys at least have blankets. We Nothing. Get, no, we might have got a blanket. I don't know, but they had. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you're we didn't even have a bed. No, <laughs> yeah. we didn't have a bed. We all was in the chapel. That is crazy. That's how many. Pe that's how many guys were there. Wrapped off, roped off, it sectioned off. They had the chapel sectioned off. That is crazy. You I never heard that. Yes. You're the first yes. one to say I, that. I, 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 I'm pretty sure somebody that's watching yeah. watching your show that's been there. there during that era did that. Yeah. 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 Until you get a bed, you go to that chapel and they're not letting you out. So they didn't have like the holding tanks or like they do like the They had them, but they, was, they, the they had it. But once they started processing you into the house and they processed us, they processed a group of us into the chapel. Shit was the craziest shit I ever seen in my life. Oh, shit. Then they finally processed us to the dorm, to the dorm situation. Yeah, finally. Oh. But yeah, I have been in there a time when it's like that. It's crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And, then when I, and then when I was being processed, that was probably my worst time when I was being in the process to, um, I had a case. I was um, trying to get my points to drop in the feds and 
I couldn't be on a certain yard because I was at a work camp and my time was low. And so I had to knock some stuff off and be eligible to stay at the camp. Yeah. So I had to go back to court. I went back to court. That was the worst. Going through the county was the worst. Tell, tell yeah. us. Well, because, you know, when you're a federal inmate, they do keep away. Okay. But then they treat, but the, the sheriffs, I, I, I would say the sheriffs treat you like you're a dog in that situation. I got treated like a dog. Especially Like I asked for phone calls. Fuck, you get your phone call, when the fuck I say? You know, oh, wow. You know, you know what I mean? You ain't special. Like that. You know what I mean? Like it was rude. But it was keep away, but it was like, they treat me like a dog. Like, oh, you, you ain't no big time. Like, it's, but I think that's the mind of it. You know yeah, what like I mean? they want to do that to you. They want to yeah, make you feel some way. That's even the mind. Because obviously, you know, us, mm -hmm. we've been to the feds. Absolutely. We we do kind of think, let's just be real, we do think, we're like, man, we got, we went to the feds. Like, so, and, and I'm sure way before in those days was I, completely even, like, different. Now, they have, like, you know, they, they I don't think they really, they don't take you to the county anymore. Like, no. now they have San Bernardino where they house mm -hmm. federal inmates, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So, I'm sure back in those days, you know, you're thinking, you know, there's a big hutch, you know, he's yeah. the feds. <laughs> <laughs> See, MDC, like the difference I think with MDC, that I thought MDC would be like the county, but it wasn't. It's just you locked down all day. It's still different treatment. Yeah. But the worst thing that ever happened, I would tell people this when they go to the feds, if you don't know about it, we know about it, is when you go on Con Air. Oh, I have Con Air. Talk about a mind f Okay, so we're going to get there. Okay, all right. We're going to get there because we haven't even got to what okay, you went ahead. to the feds for, so you're okay. going to tell us. Okay, yeah. so you... Went to in and out of the county, nothing major. Yeah, you never went major. to state, right? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no. so you're out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you doing while What are you doing while you're out before you get I was invited? My, I was living my best life. Living your best I was life. Living my best life. Okay, making you... hit records. I was traveling the world doing. Well, me. tell us about your hit records. So you were making hits before you got indicted. Yes. Oh, well, mm -hmm. tell us, because you know we I we don't know. I mean, maybe they do, but we want. I want. I want to hear you. <laughs> 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 okay, so in the process of, you know, say, you know, when I was selling dope in the 80s, I end up, me and my me and my brothers, we end up forming a group called Above the Law. Okay. Took our dope money, invested in the music industry, turned our turned our demo tape into Easy E. At the time, they were starting Easy E and NWA and Ruthless Records. Got it. Um, him and Dr. Dre and uh, Laylaw. Took, took us under their wing and put our first record out. It's called Living Like Hustlers. It's a record we wrote in a dope spot. Um, but we were real serious about getting out of the streets at the time because mm -hmm. everybody was going to jail or dying because it's the height of gang banging. It's 88, 89, 90. You know, it's the height of all that shit. Yes. You know, you, I, I grew up at a time where you kind of hit the lottery if you live past 25. Like you were like, a special person like we've lost a lot of people before we were 25 in that era between probably 85 to 93 we've lost people that didn't even that didn't even have id to go into a club yes okay mm -hmm. so we were very fortunate in 1990 we put our first album out which was an album we wrote in a dope spot and created it to get out of the streets called living like hustlers from there, we charted number one hits, all kind of stuff. Continued to make records as above the law, helping Easy E build Rufus Records, and everything. So basically, you're saying you helped Easy. Yeah, build the label and everything. Um, I wrote for N.W.A. and Easy E, co-produced them, um, and um, produced Above the Law, Cocaine. If y'all know the artist Cocaine, I, did, I discovered Snoop Dogg, Warren G. All you know. I was instrumental in, in helping them put together Death Row in the beginning, but I stayed with Easy e to help him when Dr. Dre left to help him continue building Ruthless Records. You know, yes. I helped him. You know, I was instrumental um, as being an executive, helping him when he signed Bone, Thugs and Harmony, um, everything that happened at that label up until he died. After he died, I ended up um, taking the band, taking above the law to New York, signing with a New York label, and um, from there starting my own label. And um, then I did some stuff with Suge Knight. I helped him when he went. To, he got incarcerated, so I end up helping him run Death Row oh, wow. when he was incarcerated. Um, and then after that, I went back. To, when he got home, he took back over the rings, and I went back doing my own label. Well, the funny thing is, I befriended somebody at my own label that was doing their thing in the streets. I was helping him. Do his thing because I was still connected. For sure. You know. That's I, you. Been my whole life. You know. Um, 
he end up doing something out of character, honestly, sis. Way out of character. You know what I mean? That I wouldn't have been dealing with. So what I was helping him deal with it had nothing to do with what he got caught up with. Okay. In turn, he end up offering some information on me and what I was doing. Seriously. And I had nothing to do with it, you know. Now, this was a guy who called, my children called his uncle. That's you know. how it goes, huh? So this is how the story goes. Weak ass fools. You know. <laughs> there you go. You can say it. Weak ass we, fools, we yeah. Can't do your time. I didn't have a problem. With, you know, I, I didn't have a problem with getting caught. Yeah. Just catch me. Don't tell nobody where I'm at. Facts. That didn't know where I was at. Mm -hmm. So he did it. I was hit dead bang. Boom. For something that's legal. 400 pounds of marijuana. It was. They tried to come get a thousand. They didn't get it. They only got four in the house that I had. Right. That I was in cahoots with mm -hmm. the folks at. No one knew about it, but this guy. Mm -hmm. Boom. So there it goes. Now, when I get indicted, the funny thing about when I get indicted was it's at the height of my music career. So I'm Always the example. That way. So I'm the example because they looking at all my shit and it's legitimate. So like, oh, you a slick. You know the fans. Mm -hmm. Oh, slick. yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, you think you're slick. U.S. attorney come in, oh, yeah, I know you as Mr. Above the Law. You ain't slick. You going to prison. Came out the lady mouth. I said, okay, run it. My attorney's there. Run what you going to run. They ran they play. I said, okay, where do I go? You know how what long, I mean? How long did you do? I got 41 months. Okay. So with that, I was gone, third one, um, what, 28 months mm -hmm. because I got dabbed. Okay. When I was in, I, I got that, which knocked like seven, what, 16, 15 months off. Which of, is amazing. Off of that sentence. Yeah. Um, For the people that don't know, what is DAP? DAP is a drug program. program. It's a drug program that you, you're eligible if you're a drug offender. Um, and my attorney, um, he campaigned to get the judge to recommend it got in it. sentencing. Yeah, because you can't take it unless you get recommended. There you go. So it was a play we had mm -hmm. when we went in there. He was like, okay, look. Yeah, I'm you know, Cause I wasn't gonna rat. I wasn't, <laughs> I, one thing about me, I wasn't gonna rat. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a reason to. And at the end of the day, I felt like um, if I'd done it, I'd done it. So I can do the time yeah. if I'd done it, you know? So I just took it. I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't gonna take the conspiracy. They originally wanted to give me, it was 10 to life because of conspiracy, but they never could prove conspiracy. And let me tell you what the dirty m did. They did a phone count on me and we were talking about Laker tickets. Now, I know Shaquille O'Neal. I know all these people. So I go to Laker games all the time on the floor. So they took me saying, yeah, we got four on the floor, four tickets on the floor at the Laker game as us talking about Oh some drugs. my goodness. Yeah. They try to get me on that and say, oh, I was the mastermind. I was this. I was that. But they never could prove it. That is ridiculous. Yeah, so since so since they couldn't prove it, my, my attorney, he went in and and and, and said and, and told them that I would take I would take the um, the weight if they would drop the conspiracy because mm -hmm. they couldn't prove it. They, it just, they've just been spinning their wheels. Yeah. And the only thing that was scary for me is that dude was going to come in and rat on me, truck driver, everybody that was involved in the shit was going to come in because it was heavy. What we, cause, you know, I don't, I don't toot my horn or nothing is cool, but we Beep talking. Beep. I was heavy. <laughs> I was heavy. I was heavy back then. And I learned my lesson when you heavy, you know what I mean? And what people don't know is we know we tell them when you're heavy, you know. When you're heavy, you're going to get indicted. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? It's like All no these talking about indicted, they, they ain't heavy. They Yeah, because when you're heavy, you're getting indicted. So I, but I didn't know that until I got into it. And they're like, oh, we're this, and we can do this, and we can try this. I'm like, all you can do is tell me where I need to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not with... I never was with telling on nobody. I never was with that shit. I never was with, like if I did it, like I said earlier, if I did it, I did it. And it's sad because the cat who told on me, his legal people say he was gonna get the same amount of time that he would have got if he didn't say shit at all about with you. With the feds, it kind of works that way. Yeah. 
Hey, he was going to get the same amount of time. And he, if he didn't, all he had to do was just lay his case out. Because mm-hmm. really all they had was a bunch of phone Cuts. records. And they only had a certain amount. They had what we wanted to get, what we were going to, going to purchase. But they didn't seize it. They only had it through confessions. Yes. They did not. Only thing they had was the four hundred pounds, which shit is legal now. I feel stupid now. It's <laughs> legal now. I get but it. But back then it yeah, was like it heavy. Was, it was it intense. Was heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was intense. Yeah. yeah it was and intense. I was moving it on the East Coast, so everything back then was was definitely drugs. Yeah. No. Weed for sure. is drugs back then. Yeah. For Cause sure. Because I know when I got shipped to Detroit, because it's out of Detroit. The case was out of Detroit. When I got shipped back to Detroit, they were like. Oh, everything out here is drugs. We don't care about you, California. Y'all, y'all let everything slide. We don't. We're heavy on this stuff. You, you're a drug dealer. It was in my shit. And then they had help. They had, they had a guy that was like a brother to me helping them. So yeah. So tell me, how long, how long were were you fighting your two years? Two, oh wow. They, so you were, you were at NBC LA. Not two years. I got out. I, I got out because. Since I had children and oh. I had a family and I had work, they said oh, nice. he's productive. Like you know, I was in a bit. I was a professional. Okay. So I I had the opportunity. So to you get were fighting your case. The probation. Out. I had to pay. You know that probation. Yes. That yeah. Federal um um pre-trial the yeah. pre-trial the pre-trial probation. Yeah. I was okay. able to be out and do that. I went to MDC. Got processed. Took like about a couple of weeks. Then I get out. So tell yeah. me about your little experience at MDC. Did they fish? Like they didn't fish. Those back in those days? No. You didn't talk to the toilets? No, there was no you girls. know, with MDC, and you know, with MDC, MDC is really ran like a, a well oiled machine. Only thing you just lock down all day. You are in the pods. You're in the pod. You're in like a pod. Yeah. So when you're in the pod, you're on a tier, and you only come out four hours. That's the shower, watch TV, eat. Do your little calisthenics workout. Yeah. And that's it. Where's the right girls now. back then in, at MDC? Yeah, it, it's the girl side. Yeah. Okay. All that. It, it, LA MDC is, yeah, it, they got both sides. Well, I'm just saying from the, those years, because I was there for yeah. like a year and a half. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to visualize it in the years you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, okay. yeah, cause, okay. cause, cause, yeah, I know some girls that were there. <laughs> No, I know some girls that were at NBC when okay. when I was in that was in the feds when I was in the feds. Okay. So some homegirls. So did you yeah. have to turn yourself in? Yeah, absolutely. All right, tell me Terrible. about that feeling. <laughs> my God. Ah. Huh. I'm still, so so after I get out, you know, and I fight my case, take about a year and a half to fight it, because um, you know how the feds they slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to go fly back to Detroit and turn myself in, but I said no. My kids are here. My girl is here. As, you know, um, I need to be redesignated. But that was just for us to buy some time. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally redesignated me to TAF in Bakersfield. TAF, right? Okay. So TAF FCI. So let me tell you about a long drive. <laughs> tell us. My girl's driving me. I'm trying to listen to everything from Mo Bounce to uh, to Shed So Many Tears. Because I know I ain't going to hear this shit when I get in there. It's going to be dead silence, right? You know, so so the the drive was just ridiculous, right? I kind of wish, I kind of wish I wouldn't have, I kind of wish I would have went through MDC because the last probably 10 minutes well, my girl and that little process was like a hollow moment. You know what I mean? Like as the bottom dropped, that's when it hit me. I think, you know, I dropped my son off at school. He was a baby at the time. He was probably like seven, eight, something like that. My youngest. Um, and that broke me. Oh my goodness. That broke me. And then when, last time with my girl, that broke me too. So. I think it's harder when you turn yourself in than actually being shipped from a place. I think this is probably going to be a little weird, but I just have to ask because it popped in my head. Mm-hmm. Did you have sex in the car before you left? <laughs> the night before. <laughs> okay. In okay. the morning. Okay. So, you know, I just, you know, I just The night ask. before, in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent question. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just got to make sure. Yeah. It's going to be three years. I'm not going to see this. <laughs> You know, okay. I'm not gonna see this beautiful chocolate thing. It's gonna be yes, three years, right? yes, yes. You know what I mean? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. So um, I get there, and I think, like I said, I think I, that, that was harder than going through 
because if I went to MDC, I'd have just been at MDC and then got shipped to, you know, where I want to go. Or if I would just, when I got sentenced, just went into custody mm-hmm. and got shipped back. Although I wouldn't have liked Con Air, but we'll get to that. Yes. We digress. So, <laughs> so I get in, and and the first the thing that the thing about I think when you go in prison, what people don't realize, I think the hardest night is the first night. It's the hardest night because it's surreal. It's surreal, huh? It's like surreal. Especially like I didn't even feel like that when like when I was at MDC or at the county, because you know. You think when you go, when you say you at MDC, you know you got action to get bail. You know you got action. To, so you you hoping to get right out, right? So I go and I get right. They recommend that I'm not a threat. I got family. I have been to say he's not going to run. He's not a flight risk. That's why I got out. That's why they gave me the pretrial. You know, because you get out on your own mm-hmm. in the feds. You know, there's really no bail. Somebody, a couple of people, a couple of my, my CPA and then... My girl, mom, their business, they're high in business, so they came and vouched for me and they let you out nice. on them, right? So you get out. When you go to prison, you kind of know this where you're going to be at for, uh, for yes. a little while. You know what I mean? So it's hard. <laughs> Ain't no, you're not about to go to court on the 13th and they might let you out. No. You here for <laughs> Christmas, your birthday, your mama's birthday, everything. Mother's Day, everything. You know? Yes. So that was hard. Knowing that I'ma be there. Girl, who gonna all that shit go And those last ten shit. minutes. And yeah. Before you try to go to sleep. And you're up all night. Oh my goodness. Is it gonna be drama? Anybody okay, so tripping? tell me. So you get you get dropped off, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, you know, she's crying probably like, oh, I'm never gonna Oh for sure, yeah. You know, you're mm. you're like, oh, Fuck, should I fucking run? Like, you know? So whatever, you get off the car. What mm-hmm. happens? Like, do you have to like walk through? Like, does a gate open? Like, well, you know, when, when you turn you? yourself in, it's just like you walking up into some shit to, to, to um, go buy some groceries. <laughs> you know, you walking in the main part and you say, oh, I'm here to surrender. Then, then it, then it start getting real dark. Quick. They coming out. <laughs> oh yeah, um, Mr. Hutchinson, did it, did it, did it, boom, bop, boom. Then your girl eyes is getting big, like what the <laughs> going on? This shit is stupid. Oh now. my goodness, it's horrible. Uh, yeah, here, take this, and what are you gonna need? And she asks a thousand questions, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm going to prison. <laughs> you asking some stupid questions right now. You know what I mean? Because it sounds stupid to me. Like I'm. No, I get uh, it. And like, what do we do? And what about? And he's gonna get. And <laughs> what I, I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm going to prison. Just here. This is what we drove to. Yeah. 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 You know, they ain't know the questions are over. She's like, yeah, and then, and then do so. I'm feeling out. Oh, so she was able to get off the car and walk you inside. Yeah, you, you, like, you know, the intake is like, uh, only time, like when you turn yourself in, you're going to go into the regular main part. Like, I, I never, I always had no, like I'm saying, a bell you, hold. Yeah, you're going to go into the, you go into the main part. Like when you surrender, you go into the main part. Got you don't it, go, it. and then they come out and get you. Okay. So you fill out, you know, you, you, you know, you, you, you just fill out like who you are and you give them the little, then they, then they take you into the chains and all that shit. And then, so, so you and, know I should yeah. you, huh? <laughs> but they tell you like it, when they designate you, the cool thing about when they designate you, they tell you what to wear, like some sweats, some, you know, some clothes. Oh, so you you're already know. in your grease. You kind of know. Yeah. <laughs> I was in my grades already, yeah. You kind of know. So so when you're in there, don't wear no shoelaces, don't wear no, because you're, you're not going to need none of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. So you kind of show up in flip-flops and sweats down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're not, you're not keeping your shoes. You're not, sure. There's no need to, you know, need yeah. to have none of that. You know, you know, have that, no jury or nothing like that. They kind of tell you when so, you show up. So is that so. where you did your majority of your time no, at no, no, TAF? No. How long were you at TAF? I was only at TAF for four months. Okay. And I got the drug program. They didn't have one. Okay. So they shipped me out from there to Nellis. And Nellis Air Force Base. Yeah. Oh, so tell yeah. us how, about your, you know, your shipping process. Shipping process was cool because I had paid my restitution, so my points were low. Okay. So you get a furlough. Ah. From there, it's furlough a low. Meaning one, you can leave. You get a furlough. You get you get forty. Let me get twenty. What you get? Thirty hours to get to the next destination. Something like that. So. If it's Vegas, like say for Vegas, they'll give me, they'll give me um, the opportunity to either get somebody to um, take me, or but bus. Get a ticket, yeah. When you get the bus ticket, you get a longer time. So <laughs> you got pull, you got picked up. 
Oh no. <laughs> yeah, in the car. So only four months. Huh? After four months. Only four months because 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 you um it's when you eligible when got they have a spot for you to so they pick you out of. Got it. You know what I mean? Okay, it so could really, take longer, but got yeah. it. So mm -hmm. really quick. So the, your four months when you first get to prison, did the people know who you were? Yeah. Like absolutely. the guys? Yeah. They make you, some of the guards. Ah. Yeah. So you, you thought you were like a little superstar? Or what? No. I, but the funny thing about it, it's, it's funny, when I got in there, I, I told all the guards, even the guards that knew me, I was like, I don't want no extra. I don't want nothing right, extra. No. I just want to be, just want to do my time. You know, at the time, it was, um, what's the, what's the white guy? Um, Cheech and Chong. He was there. Oh, he was wow. just leaving. Oh, kidding. He was at, yeah, he was at, he was at the same facility as me, but he was leaving and I was coming. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So. But I told you know I would tell everybody you know, I don't want no special treatment I don't want I man it was pretty breezy. They're like chill you know? fool I'm just me. Yeah I don't want no extras I don't you know yeah. I, I, did you I, rap to them? Nah I never rapped. Uh, in, I never rapped in there. <laughs> I just did my time. I, you know. So but your girl was writing to you and she did, oh, she, did she visit you and stuff like that as well even though in those four months? Yep. Oh mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Oh so she was a super writer. She wasn't a super writer, but she wrote me. She sent me pictures. And <laughs> no, I mean like shit. she was with you, like she was writing with you through no, the process. Writer, no, but we'll get to that. Okay, okay, so we will get to that. You get picked to go to Nellis, or uh, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, to the program. To the program. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you get picked up. So, so, so you they ship in the you. Car? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they ship you. Um, we do that boom. I because what I do is I bust to L.A. and go to my house, mm -hmm. then drive get dropped off that kind of thing right that's got how I it. Do it so super deviating we do it like that but you got the hours to do it because uh, you got to go with the bus schedules mm -hmm. going from Bakersfield LA and, and then you just beat it you know what I mean once she pick you up you're gonna beat the bus the bus anyway <laughs> so you got I had a few hours to go to house play around with the kids Aww, knock it down which is good keep going yeah you know what I mean so I did that I get to I get to Nellis Nellis was cool Said Nellis about a year. Okay, what well, was cool about it? Everything. So what, it's a camp. It's a work us. camp. Okay, it's so a, you were it's in a camp. Work camp. Lord, it's a yeah. work camp. Um, all you gotta do is be able to keep a job there and then be in a part of the drug program. So, it's outside jobs. Is is. It's actually when they say club fed, that's one of the club feds. Yeah. So it was ideal for a person like me, like a person that already had a career. Already was, you know, because jail to me was a culture. It was a transition culture because I wasn't living that kind of life. I lived the ce celebrity life, basically. Touring around the world, five-star hotels, and then bang, you know, I'm in prison, you know. So when I got to Nellis, Nellis was more like I was in prison, but I wasn't because I was outside all the time. I was, you know, dealing with regular people all the time like we wasn't dealing with inside jail people all day only when you lock down Got it. on the compound yes when you go when, when you go to work you're working with people outside ah, on the street so what was your job i had two jobs i had two different jobs i was a groundskeeper which was my best job i was a groundskeeper on the base and then i used to be a custodian on the base that we cleaned up all of the um the barracks, the barracks, the um, cafeteria, the, all that. We would, we were like a crew. We would just travel around the base mm. all day and keep all the little restaurants and everything on the base clean. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. The, but the best job was a groundskeeper job because I worked outside with people in, in our, our, um, where we lived at was like the barracks that the military stayed in God. doing work. So we had a game room and all that kind of stuff. Well, we just had to keep the whole base grounds, like do um, um, the golf, mow the golf course, keep the sprinklers working, uh, keep all the plants and everything up at all the dorms, you know, and all. And, and one of my homies, Big Jess, he, he, had, been, he had done, Big Jess said probably, because Big Jess was at TI with my brother back in the days. and. He probably had walked down about 20 of them, and he was the cook. He would cook regular outside food when we would do the outside uh -huh. jobs, you know, because we work with the, the, the um, airmen and we're, we're civilians. So depending on what, you know, what the yeah. assignment was. So that was the best. But the worst thing about it, I got in there. I don't know if you were in there when they did all the government cuts. Probably not. They did all the government cuts where they took all of the camps and all of the um, standalone federal facilities. They cut them. Okay. They lost their funding. So they closed that program down, which fucked me because I hadn't gotten the program yet. 
So it was cutting into my short, my good time. I think they redid it because I did RDEP. They call it RDEP now. Probably. Yeah, it's RDEP. And yeah. I was in mm-hmm. 2012. So. so they cut it from all those standalone facilities. And so in order for us to get it, we had to be shipped off. Because mm. the facilities closed. Got it. The got whole it. facility closed, right? Because the government cut the funding of all them standalone programs. They okay. still had the program, but you had to do it at a penitentiary. That's what I was going to say, yeah. You had to do it at a penitentiary. So all of us who had it ah. got reclassified. So you just kind of lost all your freedom. Yeah, we got reclassified. And then they shipped me to the South. Con Air came and picked us up. Tell us about and Con Air. It was worse. <laughs> Why? It was a horrible experience for me, too, but it's about you. <laughs> okay. They take all of us, the whole facility, <gasps> on a bus. We like, oh, it's cool. It's going to be cool. You know, no problem. We going to bus it or whatever. We thinking it's cool. Man, then we going to get on. They don't fly us somewhere. So you thinking in your mind, you got your box and shit. You thinking in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> right so we get out there they they pull out on the tarmac we like okay yeah it's cool it's big ass white plane come in the shit is covert too i gotta give it to the government because they covert with it a all white plane them u.s marshals got off that plane and trooped out that thing with them m16s oh. <laughs> you should have seen the mother farting putin on that bus <laughs> it's intense the hell is this and they circle around the plane, like with the M16s. And mind you, in the feds, I don't know why, is this a mind f- why they do you around the waist? Mm-hmm. And like, why they do you, where mm-hmm. you got a, ch- ch- yeah. ch- like you Hannibal Lecter and shit. Yeah. So we all, <laughs> ch- 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 hopping I mean, off. it's not funny, but like, you know, now you're able to think about it and you're just like, this is intense. And we all saw it on a tarmac and then they come <laughs> off the thing with the little podium. Um, uh, well, your number, number please, uh, 25903-112, Hutchison, <laughs> turn around, <laughs> go upstairs, get on that plane, it's long, <laughs> the fuck, and I'm still sitting up in the corner with the M16 like this, I mm. wish you Fucker would move. Here, I couldn't Shut the f- up. Uh-huh. <sighs> don't say shit. It's just a whole mind f- I, I don't, I, I used to be like, why y'all got to do that? Then you get to El Reno. El Reno. Surprise. <laughs> what? These motherfuckers drive up to the airport. You know how we walk out the airplane into this beautiful, beautiful um, 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 terminal <laughs> with all the lights and food and everything? You walk through that tunnel and walk right into the penitentiary. <laughs> yes. Really? You walk right off the plane, right into the penitentiary. Because where, where did you go? El Reno. Where, what? Oklahoma City. Oh, yeah, Oklahoma. I went El to Oklahoma, Reno. Yeah. You go there, and then that's when they put you up on that block. Well, they put you on that block. And, and I'm telling you, it's, it's a mind. F- they put you on that block and, and make you say your number and your name and all that. Then they take you to They make you get naked and stand in that room, asshole. Naked. That shit is a mind. <laughs> Con Air, that shit is a whole mind. That's why when, when we used to get in trouble in the feds, they used to always threaten you with diesel therapy. Diesel therapy, remember what diesel therapy was in there. Remember, they put you on Con Air, and that's all. You never get a bed. You just fly around never. with them. On a plane <laughs> all day. <laughs> El Reno. <laughs> go over there. Get changed. Uh, uh, come on. Let's go. <laughs> Back on the plane. <laughs> all day. That is intense. Oh, yeah. That's what they do you. That's what you do, motherfucker. Diesel therapy. Your ass ain't getting no bed. You want to be tough? Your ass ain't getting no bed. But you were one of those tough ones. You listen. No, right? I'm just saying. That's what they. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. So when we get to, so when we get there, you get the MD, you get to, you get to Oklahoma. You get, you know, you get there. Then they reclassified us. Now, when they reclassify everybody, you kind of don't know where you're going, but you know where you're going because they tell you in your paperwork, but you don't know the f- you're going. Yeah. So by the time I get there, I'm like, okay, I'm going down south. I'm thinking I'm going somewhere cool. At the time, my dad was really sick. It was close to my dad, though. My dad was in, in Fort Worth. I wanted to go to the facility in Fort Worth because I could see him, you know. But I was in Oklahoma. I mean, I, they were shipping me to Arkansas. Okay. About an hour out of um, Little Rock. 
place called Forest City. So we're like, okay, cool. All right, so 10 hour bus drive from there to there. Um, no problem. Okay, we get on it, we do it. Okay, I get there. So I'm thinking, mind you, you got to realize a week ago, I'm at a camp living my best life, y'all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I get, we get there. It's gates everywhere. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's nothing but cotton and corn fields everywhere. Whatever kind of fields it is, it looks like the scene from Mississippi burning or some <laughs> shit out this brother. I'm a Cali shit, kid. Yeah, yeah. I ain't used to this. What the hell is this? It's motherfuckers flying planes over dusting crops, over the penitentiary. It's gates everywhere. I'm like, this where they reclassified us to? I'm like, yeah. It's an aggravated medium penalty, minute penitentiary, basically. Federal FCI. Like a real one. Oh, yeah, there's gates everywhere. You in jail. It's control movement. Tim and, you know, 10 minute, 10 minute, shit, yeah. 10 minute control movement. A whole mind, a whole, you better get somewhere. <laughs> but if you want this time cut, you're going to have to go through this. You're going to have to go run this gauntlet. Mm -hmm. I ran it. That was cool. And that's why I didn't. And when I got there, I, the, the cool thing about, I think, the higher facilities for me, which was cool, we didn't have a really, we, even at the camp, we didn't have a strong music program. That I had a strong music program. Okay, so you, that, that's, yeah. what made, that's what worked for you as yeah, well. Yeah, it did, yeah. The, getting there was probably the, and it was my last year. So, because I, I was short, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. got dab, and it knocked the time off. Yes. So, and, and. You know how they say sometimes you think it's going to be worse for you and it ends up being better? That was better. Good. Because you know? I, I think that if we wouldn't have gotten cut, it would have been at the camp. The camp was so overbooked that because it's the funding, you know, mm -hmm. the heads, you know, they're going to take the heads, you know, for the money. So I think if because if, that's what they were saying to me, they like you can either go to the camp and get it and get it right now or you can go to. And you can take the risk or go to an FCI or a penitentiary and get it immediately. Yes. Because they was giving it out there immediately. But I didn't know it would be better for me. I just didn't want to. I was like, well, you, you just I just know. left an FCI. I bumped down to a camp level. I don't want to go back to but I ended up going back there. And it ended up being for the better. So, so yeah. um, obviously, how, how was it for you adjusting? Because it was completely different. Did they know that you were a rapper there as well? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, most of the most of the people kind of knew. And I mean, and, and some, you know how it is, it, your name spread in the yard. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, dude here, yeah. Ooh. But I still had it like... Even cats that I ran with, I'd be like, I don't want no extra. So everybody kind of knew my MO. Like, he don't really be tripping off that shit. Yeah. And I would good. do, I would do like the little music, you know, the little music on the holidays and yeah, I was gonna stuff say, like oh, so that. You did it right I would there. do stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Nice. Because they had a music program there. They had a real one that did events and they had, you know what I mean? Yes. You had a lot of access to, to cool, to cool people that was putting things together that actually put stuff together at that one. They, they would do stuff where you could actually showcase what you were trying to do. I played in a little jazz ensemble. I did a little, little, you know, did a little creating some music in there and all of that. That's cool. You know, with the guys. Did your wife go visit? No. Okay. No, that, it was kind of, that's when it took a turn. Ah. So, yeah, it took a turn. I mean, I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about that, but I mean, it's up to you. Why How did not? it take a turn? I Why don't know. Not? Tell us. She took a turn. Oh, She couldn't shit. hold up. Oh, dance, that's fast. It was only like a year and a half. Yeah, two years. She wouldn't. She couldn't hold up. So, hey, some ain't that. Some ain't that tough. <laughs> you know, some well, ain't I, that tough. Well, did you have any other pen pals? Yeah, I always have that. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. I'm popular. So wait. Look, <laughs> the so, ladies. I'm so popular. you had the, so you had <laughs> fan mail. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. Had How that. cool is that? Because like, you know MTV. You know MTV at the time put it on the news that I was. So I had plenty of fan mail, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people that knew me write me, and girls would write me, and all of that. And did they oh, send yeah. you money too? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, but I, I, you know, one thing I can say about the girl that I was with, she did look. She took care of what she's supposed to do. She never turned her back on the me. The main even. one. Yeah. Not the wife. Yeah. Oh, wife. okay, okay, okay. Look, her. She, she did what she had to do, but she always had your back. She was always there. Absolutely. I mean, which is you know what I mean? Yeah. She just made a decision for whatever reason she. Made it. She. I wasn't. It wasn't her. It wasn't something that was her. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't her. You know, me going to me going to prison wasn't in the equation. So 
I understand. For sure. That's when I learned the hard lesson. Like that's why I don't I don't beat myself up about it because I went to prison. Mm-hmm. Not me and her. I love that you say that. Yeah, I went to prison. I love that you say because I feel like so many men that do go are very selfish and they just expect their wife to put their lives on hold. And it's like, bro, you're the one. You didn't put your life on hold while you were out here. True. When you go through it, you know, old guy in there taught me that. He was like, he was like, listen, he was like, take the help. If if she can't, you know, a woman is, you know, it's like a woman have needs just like you have needs when you're not there. But don't turn away to help. You know what I mean? Because that's somebody that love you, but they just might can't deal with this process mm-hmm. of not having her man there, of not having her. You know what I mean? Yes. So I learned that it hurt me, you know, like uh, in a sense of where my family was disturbed Crazy. and all of that. But I done that. Yes. You know, it's like you you went to prison, not her. You know what I mean? So you can't expect her to bear that burden. You know what I mean? That That's a, that's a real hard. That's a real heavy one to bear, yes. you know. Honestly, and I learned that from my old head, you know what I mean, in there. So I was like, hey, you're right. Even though, it, you know, maybe we could say she should have stayed, but she didn't. And it's choice. And I learned don't don't knock people for a choice that you made and make them make a choice that they not. For sure. That's not their fault. Mm-hmm. You're, them, you making a choice you made is not. On n- them. On them, yeah. So. That's why when we're tight, you know, because oh, we like to be yes. like that for our children. For sure. You know, for sure. We like to be like that for our kids. And um, and it's solid. You know what I mean? I don't. But I can tell you the truth, though. You know what I mean? She kind of wanted another life. She didn't want to live that life. And she would what, always tell what me. What type that of she, life does she want, though? Uh, you know, that, you, know, you, you know, you know, that kind of where here's the honest thing where they see a guy that is doing going to do what he do anyway they want to see if something else is more fits their right. dna you know what i mean what they you know but it's funny because it comes down to when you make those choices you really don't know what something is until you make that choice and and in some cases i think if you just ride it out that's what makes you that makes you stronger. Yes. You know what I mean? Running away from and trying to find something better when this could be your everything you haven't even figured out because you got to be tried. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. So, but some people aren't strong like that. They just, they don't see like, okay, when it get rough, they're like, ah, oh, well, nah, I'd rather not. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have it easy and light, and you know? So kind of just weak a little bit. Yeah, th- exactly. That's the life that she wanted. She didn't want like it. She didn't want like a, like, well, you're a street dude and you might continue to do this or you might continue to be like So it this. wasn't like she she was she, it wasn't like she needed somebody like to be there financially or anything cuz you're probably still supporting them. Yeah. She didn't need that. I mean, she just kind of went for it because she didn't want to she didn't want to be in in a situation where maybe I was the guy that was going to continue to be the guy going to prison all Back the time. That, uh-huh. that, that kind of thing. Got it. Which you know what I mean? In, in a long haul, but I can say like I can say like she's solid, you know what I mean? Like when it comes to like, if I can say like, because because it's like I don't want to make somebody a bad person because of the decisions they make yeah. for whatever reason they make the for decisions. Sure. OK, um, but you could have rocked with me because I'm solid, you yes. know. Give me the opportunity to show you that I'm not going to go down this path no more. Yeah. Give me the opportunity to show you that I'm different. I'm I never got that. That's the only thing that I have a regret for. Got it. Uh, I was disappointed in her about it. I never got that chance. Got it. I never got that chance to make. I got a chance to make right the crime I committed. But make not, it right, but not with her. Not with her. You know what I mean? And I never was given, I never was, I, I never was a person that was like, wasn't responsible or was a recluse. I always was responsible. It's just she wanted that kind of life where I don't want nobody that might be in and out of jail or might be doing this or might have to hustle like, because I'm a hustler. But you, know? you but you were always like that person. Mm-hmm. That's who she But that's liked. what she said. She was like, yeah, but you know, if you would have got caught in, and, and we felt like when I got caught up, the funny thing about, and I'm glad you brought it up, because we talked about that. She said, we're fortunate that you didn't get caught back in the days when you was really, really heavy doing heavy shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so 
I thought she would ride it with me. It was nothing. It was nothing compared to what I could have gotten for, sure. for what I used to do. You know, um, so she, didn't say she just didn't want to do it. I yeah. mean, you know, I guess people see something in a different light and, yeah. and it, that's just the way it is. But I don't really beat women up for that. Like, you know, we'll, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us ex-cons will talk, we'll sit around and talk shit and be like, bitches run off. And this, <laughs> and this and that, and that. You know what I mean? And I say, and then we all come to the conclusion and be like, well, shit, but, you know, we was in prison, they was on the street. So yeah, we can't, I mean, we hope they ride it out with us and give us an opportunity to be that guy that turned it around. That's why I speak like I speak, you know. I know a lot of the bros probably be a little upset for me for exposing our little ideology, <laughs> but sometimes it got to be what? like that. you know Girls are worse because ain't no fools hold it down. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right about that. That would be rough. No, no fools hold it rough. down. On There's... the flip side, yeah, that would be rough. <laughs> okay, so you get But y'all to... be rock stars, though. I can't lie. Y'all be rock stars in there, though. <laughs> y'all women be, they, hey, they take their time. Y'all take y'all time. Most I mean, women are in there because of their men. They'll take their time. And women, women be rock stars. I can't lie. They be I rock stars. They'll take, you know what I'm saying? They'll <laughs> take their time. They'll shut up and take their time. I ain't going to yeah. lie. You know? pretty down, you know? Yeah. Obviously not all, mm. but. No, all of them. Like, a lot you know, of y'all. Like, like, like mm, vice versa, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you get to uh, penitentiary where you, mm -hmm. you were going to do, your, you got yeah. designated to, to do your. Four city, yeah. Your, mm -hmm. your dap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how does that, how does that, our dap, how does that work for you? Cause you, were you an actual drug user? No, alcoholic. Ah, uh, kind of the same, drink. you know. Okay. Yeah, drink. How did you handle that program? I like, you know what I'm saying. I was an actual user, so. Well, for me, I think for me was what was, was you know I didn't you know since being in the industry, and I drunk, drank every, all the time. I didn't think it was a problem until I took RDAP. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like you don't think because it's the way you function. It's like I never was irresponsible. I never was. It's like a functioning alcoholic, basically. Mm -hmm. You know. But like, if you say like, "Oh, I don't feel good," and when I go to a, a baseball game, I need a drink. That's like an alcoholic. You <laughs> yes. said need a drink. You yeah. Know, to just have fun. Yeah. You know, oh, when I go to the club, I can't talk to a girl unless I have a drink. Yeah. That's like an alcoholic. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for right. sure. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, shoot. At least once a day, if I go somewhere, I got to have a shot of something. Oh, That's yeah. like an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Facts. Because they show you all that shit in the program, right? No, Remember? They, show they you will show all that shit and be like, yeah, you kind of, like if you need a, like if you need a glass of wine every day, yeah, if you need a glass of wine every time you eat, it's kind of like an alcoholic, you know. That's what they were showing me, like you know. I'm like, it's true. That's my life. So yeah. I was like, yeah, that was my life, you know. And and I didn't realize the wild ass decisions I was making usually was when I was drinking. Until you went to that program and realized. Until I realized it, I thought that was normal. I had been drinking since I was in high school, not like fall down drunk, but just like I would drink. Yeah. You know what I mean? Seem, like it was. You it, seemed like you would be like a little aggressive one. When you yeah, when you rec <laughs> when it's regular, you know what I mean. Like it became, when I looked at the program, and evaluated my life, alcohol was regular in my life. Even though, cause my, cause my girl would be, she would be like, well, you not really know, you not really, you don't really be getting drunk, you don't really be doing it, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. It would only be when I'm like, at events. Um, you work when you're working. In a studio, the in, uh, or or out at you know out at something right, socializing right, but that was eighty percent of my life though, sis. It's eighty percent of my life. Yeah. It controlled all of that. It controlled me some nights not never coming home, mm -hmm. being on a wild binge. Not every night, but it was regular. Every other. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was regular. It was it was once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. It was regular. You know. It, even though I wasn't like missing the kids' recitals and, and you know what I mean, so my girls she was like, "You don't really be," yeah. mm -hmm. but if I weighed like what I was doing, you I, I it was you regular. Were. It was regular in my life. Uh, what would you say was the craziest thing you saw while you were in prison? Craziest thing? Let's see. That you saw, mm. or even experience. Craziest thing I saw. Oh, it's a couple of them. Well, the craziest thing I experienced was this. Okay, <laughs> you know, this is what, this is, and I ain't going to bring no names into it. <laughs> no. But I say I had a friend, 
Okay. And he was in the cell with me, right? Oh, shit. So when, uh, so when the, um, at MDC, when the, um, when you go, when they, when they open it up, you, you, you can go take a shower, go, you know, you get, go to the TV room, watch your little program, do your little workout, you know, that little four hour thing, right? So, so, um, so I'm coming, I come, come back to the cell and I'll just say it like this. Somebody coming out of it acting like you. Ah. I look, I said, So I said, say, man. So I go to my cellie. I said, he in there on his bunk. I said, say, man. What the thing uh, doing right? Oh, that's my bitch. I said, hey, man. <gasps> check this out, man. I'm about to go to court, get released out of here. Oh, however many longer days I'm here, I don't need to see this around me. People know me on the tier. I don't fuck around like that. <gasps> Do now, other mind people you, know? Now, oh, yeah, I guess they knew. Now, mind you, this guy look tougher than me. This guy looked tougher than me. I said, is this what's going on here? Oh, man, I got 20 years. I said, hey, bro, you just got your time. And you on punks? Oh, shit. Oh yeah, that's I've experienced. Said, oh yeah, oh yeah, all oh, the most man. Oh listen, listen. That is intense. Listen, did you move out? Did you move out of your room? No, I stayed and I just told him. He, he, I gave my, I laid my rules. I said, hey man, you want to do that? When you gonna do that when I leave? You gonna have some temptation here, homie? When I leave, you can do all that shit. But I don't see dudes. I don't see dudes knock some off in the shower and, and go out there and kiss they broad in the mouth and, oh. on the dance floor. I ain't never said, hey, listen, that thing is real. That scenario in there is real. You want to hear some story? That thing is real. I remember one time we was having a meeting in the day room, and motherfucker was like, who's shitting in the shower? Well, you know what that is. That's somebody getting their booty hole busted. <gasps> so this old head in there, so we all arguing like, oh, so, do, 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 do. he said, hey, man, we ain't going to keep on playing this shit. These punks in here, y'all going to stop this punk shit. Y'all going to have to do that on y'all other time. The showers and shit. Now that shit is real in there. Oh shit. Oh okay, okay, okay. And they don't and, and they don't look like Twan. They don't look like no. They look like <laughs> they look like me. Tough as hell. You know what I mean? That's something that it really, really. that shit really tripped me out in there. That shit is probably the most. You know. Craziest, and and I remember when we and all this happened when I went on the penitentiary on the on the, on that level. Like I didn't see any of that at the camp level, but when I was locked down, that used to happen, you know, a lot. And then um, and then one time we was, you know, how we have wreck, and I remember one time we was playing, you know, out on the field working out, and um, dudes broke out, straight knife fight on the field, <laughs> some old <laughs> SWAT, yeah, stabbing each other, yeah, it was just crazy. I mean, I'm not trying to say, like, that's yeah. better to watch. I mean, that is better to watch than to watch, like, you were, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're both bad. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I just as I, you as a man, you're just like, oh, wow. Like. No, it goes on. You know, when I see my buddy, you know, when I see my celly on that shit, I was like, I was disappointed. Like, I was like, really, for real, like, you and your own punks. Like, yeah, and it's like, no disrespect, just, because it's, you know, like, it's your own, you know, what out in the free world, whatever, whatever. I don't just, care what you do when I ain't around. You know? I don't want you know, nobody putting that jacket on me. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't want nobody putting that jacket on me. But when that, you try to play the part like you're not, like, it's that's He was little, playing a part like yeah. he wasn't. Okay. Yeah. I got to sleep with this motherfucker. I ain't on that. I got to sleep with this motherfucker. He on punks. The fuck they going to think about me? Let me get out of here. Yes. You know well, I mean? you ended up getting out, right? And I got rolled up. Yeah, I got rolled up like the next morning. It was crazy. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, I got rolled up the next morning. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it wasn't even that long. You just woke up and left. Yeah, I got oh, rolled up the good. next morning. Yeah, that's why That's why I was saying I'm about to get shipped. I'm about to get out of here. They released me that next morning because I already was eligible. Remember, that's after I went. Yeah. And I was eligible to get they all my all my CPA came, my accountant came, and they just vouched for me. And got then it, got they did it. a signature bond. That's what it's called. Okay. Yeah, it's called a signature bond. They did a signature bond for me, and I was out the next day. But I experienced that, and, and that's why I tell a lot of women that I talk to, I'll be like, y'all got to be careful sometimes when y'all be, you know, 
you got to just really be careful. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to really be careful. Not to out nothing or nothing, but we don't, you know, them boy boys, they, they, they frequent, they, they, they fluid. <laughs> For real. Oh. That, yeah. and that, that's one of the more weird, weird experiences. Because to me, I, I didn't, I kind of never thought of it like that. It was new to you. I thought the that was on shit like that was the funny, you know, the motherfucker got all flamboyant. And yeah. It's like, I was no, like, yeah. yeah, caught you by surprise. Yeah. Just to just to know that it goes on. Now I never seen the act or anything like that, but I'm just saying it goes. When it goes down, you know. And and like I said, the old heads will tell you it's regular. It's regular with these dudes in here. It ain't, you know. It, yeah. It's, it's regular, you know. So. Okay. <laughs> Not that to blow your mind like that. That was pretty intense, you know. I'm sorry, but yeah. Nah, no. I mean, yeah. it's it's. It's it's good, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. part of a, what it, yeah. it is part of what. It's it an is. experience of my life that I'll never, I never take for granted yeah. ever again. You know. So yeah. you do your program. Mm -hmm. Um, everything just goes smoother for you. You enjoy yeah. being. I mean, not that you enjoy mm -hmm. it, but you know, you make the best out of it. Um, you that have, makes you that makes you be aware of a lot of things. Like it, it control my. It helped me with my anger. It helped me with you know, because at the like I said at the time, my dad was really sick. When I went to team, my last time, my dad had called me and he was like, it's kind of all bad, but you know, my dad passed on, so it's no, yeah. Um, but, I'm yeah. sorry, mm -hmm. were you able to be out? Yes, I was. And the, the thing that helped me with that, my counselor, when I was getting ready to be released, when my dad was on his deathbed, they were gonna send me down to Dallas to see him. Okay. And they, they, um, I wasn't able to see him living mm -hmm. ever again. But what they did is, this is why they released me to the halfway house, so I wouldn't have to furlough out of the penitentiary and then back into the penitentiary and back to the halfway house. Okay. They just gave me my halfway house papers kind of early. Okay. Like maybe like a week early. And ship me and then refer that if his dad is still sick, we recommend him go see his dad before he passed. But when they was making my paperwork, my dad passed. <sighs> when I got by the time I got to the halfway house, he passed. Oh, you know, what I mean? and then the, and then my counselor at the halfway house, she was like, well, we already got your recommendation. So we just going to sign off on it right now. So you can go down and be with your family. Oh, you know what I mean? The first week I was in the halfway house. Hey, well, yeah. at least you were able to be with your family. And that's just because my dad, my our dad counselor recommended all that stuff, you know, which was amazing. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, yeah. it's I mean, it's sad that you weren't able to actually spend time yeah. with him. But, you know, it something that you were able to do about it but you were able to spend time with your family during the process absolutely yeah of, you know yeah. obviously because you yeah and I, I got to go to the funeral without a without a guard and all that crazy penitentiary looking shit mm -hmm. you know what I mean? no yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 which my family would have been like what the <laughs> yeah who the fuck is this how was the halfway house for you oh uh, so you wait so you went to the halfway house where your dad was at no, I didn't. I went to Cali, and then and then Cali gave me what the what the what the feds would have given me like the to go to the yeah to go. And how was a halfway house for you? Halfway house was cool. Um, halfway house, I, I was in that one in El Monte. Um, then I guess that same one in El Monte has been mm -hmm. around for like centuries, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went to that one. Um, it was it was nice. It, I mean, it was cool. I mean. Um, only thing I didn't like about the halfway house hustle was the work hustle. The, the you have to pay the work. money mm -hmm. to pay the money. I thought that was a scam. Even if you're not, even if you're not even there, like if you're like, scam, what thought. is it called when you leave? Then they give you um the passes. I mean, the, um, no. work pass. I don't mean, when well, they let you go home and you're still paying for the damn bed. Right. There's like yeah. ten people to one fucking bed. Yeah, home. Um, what's home, the, confinement. home confinement. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, you're still paying for it. You still got to pay. For the bed. So when you were That's okay, a racket. So when you got out and you're in the mm -hmm. halfway house, you're in Almani, uh -huh. and you're you're working, but you're you're working for yourself. No, you I actually was here. working for a law firm. I mean, not a law firm. I was working for a real estate firm. My buddy, he owned a um, contracting company, and I worked for his office, just okay. doing running, delivering um, 
blueprints and, you know, so like paperwork for the real estate, you know. Um, it was cool. I mean, that was cool. Then then I then I got reacclimated to to the industry and start working on music again. And okay. you know, my you know, you know, my PO, they didn't like that. <laughs> they didn't want me to do anything until I was off fucking paperwork five years of fucking paperwork. They didn't want me to do anything. So I was kinda hindered. But maybe about the last two years of it. Um, I got a really cool PO, and he was like, "You know, if that's your profession, that's what it is. I'm not gonna block. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna keep pressuring you to have a job and all that. Go do your job, you know. And then he just started giving me my passes and, got it. you know, and all that to travel and do that. Let me ask you yeah. a question that just popped into my mm -hmm. head. So, because obviously you said that you're the one that you know you brought. You're the one that found like Snoop, and yeah. you know you helped mm -hmm. these people what, yeah. before you got incarcerated. Yeah, exactly. So. Mm -hmm. Did these fools reach out to you while you were incarcerated? No. Only people reached out to me was more like executive people. You know what I mean? People that were executives. That I never, or artists, no. Not even these gang gang wannabe ass fools that no, were no, rapping no. about gangs no that artists. you brought out. No artists. I never got a letter from no artists. Oh. They, they kind of like would pass stuff through through my brothers and them and be like, yeah, man, tell him when he get home, he he got this and he got that and he got he got this and he got that and, and all that. And we rooting for him and all that. But I ain't getting no letters. Nobody took no time out like that. Not saying that. But I mean, you know, we I think in our industry. We are in so much of a demand. Nails are getting ready to talk shit about Snoop right now. <laughs> yeah, we we in so much of a demand of time. I understood that part. So them just shooting messages like, no, keep his I head understand. Up. You know what I mean? Because my brothers would see him and they'd be like, yeah, Snoop said what's up. Warren said what's happening. This and uh, yeah. And you know, Dre. When I got home, Dre was the one that helped me the most. Though. Okay, so tell us like, about that. Like when I got that. home, like he's the first. Like a few years after I got, you know, free to, to move around and mm -hmm. go run into people, I ran into him. And then shortly after that, they were working on Straight Outta Compton, you know. And then he just gave me a shot to be on the soundtrack and everything and kind of got me back on my feet on, on that level, like back acclimated and mm -hmm. everything all the way, you know, because before that I was kind of like moving around and kind of fending for myself. Trying to, you know, find. trying to find my way, yeah, you know. So he's one of the people that kind of, once he got rewired back up, because for a minute he wasn't doing a lot either until. Yeah, because you know, it, it, yeah. you know, with this music mm -hmm. industry. I mean, right. I know because I'm not, so, I'm not in the music, but you know, I see, you mm -hmm. know, it always has ups and downs. Always has yeah. ups and downs. You know, it, so like a real, like really being back in the loop. He's one of the key people that put me really back in the loop, and then a couple of other guys who were executives helped me get back focus back on everything okay so but i mean you know one thing you'll know about me is i went to prison i'll own it you know what i mean i'll take full responsibility for it you don't gotta ride it. you don't have to let me you know. ride yeah, and i and, and i <laughs> and, and and when you know you know like my crews took a lot of hits you know my partner my rap partner my best friend when I, he passed. So it's been a long journey for me. So I can only be happy about celebrating my life. Now I'm free. Yes. My kids are grown. They're healthy. Well, you've been out yeah. for a while. Yeah, I've been out. You've while. been out for, yeah, a, long for, a, bit, for a long while. Well, yeah. What year did you get out? Um, I got out in eight. In, in 2008. Two, eight. And then I finished my paperwork like in 13 or something like that. Yeah. That's when so, I went in, mm -hmm. 2008. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So using that transition when they was flipping everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's when you got out. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you been doing since? Oh, I got businesses. I mean, you know, I really, when I got home, what I wanted to do is like what Easy taught me, like own everything, own myself. So first thing I did, I started my own company, you know, um, putting out my own records again, putting out, you know, doing joint venture deals with people. And then I started my own online clothing co uh, merchandise company. Um, I own um, my own film film and music company called Musa TV that I produce my own film content um, and just stand fast forward in business. Okay. You know, since you see me, I've developed all of that. I had, I was developing, I think when we were hanging out, I was developing all of that stuff 
then now all that stuff is manifested. It's it's happening. Good. You know, we just I just put out my first television show, The Black Godfather. I directed it, produced it, starring in it, all that's on my own streaming network. And then I have my e-commerce company. And then um I'm developing right now, I'm developing an energy company. So yeah. Well, good for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, so I, you know, along with, you know, we're putting out our last recordings of Above the Law, the last recordings that we had. We're going to do that this year. And I'm just moving forward with my, uh, you know, I just did a deal with Mob G Entertainment. putting Shout out to the Mob first, G. Putting out our <laughs> first, um, the first phase of Above the Law um, legacy run that we're on because it's the 30th year, 30th anniversary of Aww. our pivotal album, Uncle Sam's Curse, which um, the title track on that is Black Superman, so it's 30 years of that. So we're putting out two albums, a book, and a documentary this year on Above the Law. So, yeah, well, that's where we're at. Well, congratulations. Yeah. You yeah. know, we just, you know, we never stop working. It doesn't matter no, no, no. what, what no, happens. Stop hustling. You know, you don't because we're still alive and we still got to survive. Yeah, there you, you go. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. You know, I'm, I'm happy that I got to see you. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, you know, it's been After a while. After the pandemic. After the, uh, we survived mm-hmm. it. We survived it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I'm glad. I'm glad when, when I'm my glad. husband told me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what, really? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, cool, you know. I'm around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What well, is there anything else that you would want to share that you haven't shared before we close? Um, no. Um, just... I guess um, pick up um, everybody. Stay tuned for the Pomona Love album by Above the Law coming out in a, in a few. I guess in a month or so. On um, the singles out right now, um, streaming everywhere. Um, what is that? Um, Straight out of Pomona, and then um, Do It is coming out uh, in a few weeks. The next single in the album will be out in April. So just buy, go get Pomona Love. <laughs> Right yeah. now, by above the law. <laughs> yes. The well, first one. Well, the first one. The first album on the, on the legacy run. For sure. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for coming on Indicted TV. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> you guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram.